The East Ham Historical Society would like to welcome you to the Ranlit Tool Museum, located at the Swift Daily Complex, right next to the East Ham Post Office. Once an old tool shop and garage, the museum has evolved to include a working forge and displays of hundreds of fine examples of the sheer cleverness of our Yankee ancestors. Let's go inside and meet Mark Herman, the curator. So tell us about this corner, Mark, and all the tools. Okay, uh, most of these tools are from the 1800s or, or early 1900s, possibly. On the, the right, that tall hook hanging on the wall is actually for raising and lowering coffins into the graveyard. To the left, there's a box, looks like it's on a sawhorse. That's a template for making cranberry crates, so they're all conformity and the same size. Mm -hmm. And now on this one here, we have the big unit in the front hanging down as a hay rake, and that came from the Nickerson family in town. And so that was used, that could be as back to the late 1700s. To the left is the big beam from the um, original meeting house, and then it's all sorts of sickles and brush cutters to the right. Chester Ranlett was the first curator of the museum. He actually moved it from a shed at the schoolhouse to the workshop garage at the Swift Daily House. And he was instrumental in putting it all together, getting all the tools, categorizing them. He was a fireman in Hockington who moved down to East Ham in 1983 and he bought the old town hall building, which he ended up restoring and living in. He would collect everything. He was an avid collector. Everybody knew him. He um, brought tools, a lot of the blacksmith tools, original ones down from Hockington. Tell us about the forge, Mark. The forge, also known as the blacksmith shop, is a hidden gem in the tool museum. The, uh, the original forge was donated by George Milliken of East Ham, and then we made the hood for it. Um, we have different blacksmiths come, like in Tool Discovery Day and other times, the first being Nora Babson, who makes jewelry and little, little trinkets. Then Rusty Gifford, who's um, into making knives and other things like the forge and the fire. And then myself, and I put around usually melting down old pewter. And as you can see, I make the pewter spoons, uh, toy soldiers. And we make in the back left of that picture is fishing weights that go inside the nets of, of, for fishermen that's probably from the 1800s. Um, a lot of the tools here, in the, the hammers came from Holliston, from Chester, and we have a lot of tools donated by locals and people who come and visit the museum and have something they'd like to throw, you know, give, donate to us. Tool Discovery Day is a highlight of our summer. Every July, we open the museum up and, and have it on display, and we have all sorts of craftspeople come and, and show their wares and their tools, and, and it's open for the public to see everything we have. We have a table of what's-its, and what's-its are tools that no one really knows what they are, or we try to stump the public with. People come in and say, do you know what this is for? And we've been stumped, and we've had, as you see, people that know what something is. That, that's a lot of fun. She knows. She definitely knows. Then we have our vendors. This first lady here takes old wood and makes little bowls, salad bowls. It says wood for food and it's exotic hardwoods. Then we have a group of people with lathes, the turners. They come in and they make salad bowls, wine glasses, little things with the lathe. That's a real big hit. They have a bit big. We have an airplane collection. We have the window restoration of Cape Cod and Orleans from Orleans. And this lady does all the antique windows and restores them back like new. 
and then, like I said, they'll even let people look at the, you know, maybe try the lathe and look at them. There's a lot of, lot of nice things going on. This is the center of the tool museum with a workbench with all different tools laid out. The volunteer on the left with the red shirt is a famous boat model maker, Peter Williams. He does replica boats and repairs them. Uh, very famous on the Lower Cape. As you can see, all the tools spread out on the table. There's all different kinds. We leave them out to show people to see if they know any. And one of the biggest highlights about it is when the fourth grade come through in the spring, this table is all cleared off and we have hand drills and bit braces and saws and all the fourth graders get to try their skills out and see what they can do and they really, really enjoy it. On the left here, looking out the window, we have a broad axe above, we have a couple hand saws, there's all sorts of little measuring tools on the left, advices in the middle, another picture of a center bench with a cranberry crate on it and the back wall is loaded with antique kitchen gadgets which are really, really old and very cool, people love that. In the middle we have the three planes the, the original NASA lighthouse keepers would use, probably the three sisters to keep it, keep it in shape. Then we have a whole collection of antique saws which, which are all different eras, you know, they're all different years. We have a post vise, a post drill that we let the fourth graders use and the last picture on the right is a little hand grinder which is for sharpening tools that kids really get a kick out of. On the floor here on the left we have a, a big cranberry separator and to the left of it is a scale from an old East Ham store and it's got the name up top. The cranberry separators, every small cranberry farm would have one. The cranberries, they put them in and the rotten ones would bounce, would fall down to the box on the bottom the rest would come out on a conveyor belt and they would pull them and, and sell them. You can actually see one of these working in, in Dennis at Annie's Crannies which is kind of a neat place. She has all the antique tools cranberry tools that you can see. The next thing is an apple press that was actually used on the farm, I believe. It, it was from the dailies. Um, the next one is a fruit press and it's kind of a big, kind of nice. It's got the two barrels underneath and you can just see it from the other side too. And then outside is just different farm implements you can see as you walk out the tool museum. Thank you for watching the video. At the moment we're closed and we hope to be open and running next summer and hope to see everybody there. Um, while we've been closed, we have been getting a lot of tool donations, which is what we need to keep the museum going, local and other. Um, local tools are always the best, especially a tool with a good history. Um, so we hope next year to be open, have the forge running more, and see everyone. Thank you very much. Photos and videos, courtesy of Sylvia Sullivan, Marka Daly, and the archives of the East Ham Historical Society. Narration, Mark Herman, curator of the Ranlett Tool Museum. Thank you very much for your continued support of the East Ham Historical Society.